Welcome back, my friend. In this episode, we are going to watch something truly special from 1952, a milestone moment in the annals of cricketing history, India's first ever test victory, followed by an exclusive interview with the only surviving member of that Indian team, Mr. C. D. Gopinath, who also took the winning catch. Gopinath reflects on what it meant to have won against a very country who had ruled us. He also shares with us memories of friends from the Indian and English teams, and pays a glowing tribute to the legend Sir Frank Worrell. team is in India on their second tour to play a five test match series what was the mood like in either of these countries on the first day of the historic match in India there is hope and excitement for the newly elected leaders the first general elections hailed as the biggest experiment on democracy in human history has successfully concluded in England there is grief and sorrow for the sovereign that beloved king george the 6th whose reign saw the decline of the british empire has just died now to cricket earlier in the delhi test after scoring an unbeaten century vijay merchant announced his retirement delhi bombay and kolkata tests are drawn and india has lost the kanpur test we are now at chepok England led by Donald Carr batted poorly with Vinu Mankat causing the damage with a career best of 8 wickets for 55. India in response amassed a massive lead with centuries from Pankaj Roy and Pauli Umrigar. In the second innings taking 4 wickets each Mankat and Gulam Ahmed engineered the collapse and it was all over for England. After digging through our archives I was able to find a short clip from this match. to set your expectations it's poor in quality sketchy in details and was dead silent this is the only available relic from history so i have taken the liberty of filling in the audio with narration based on what i could glean from history books and newspaper archives as usual we start with newspaper headlines accompanied by a lovely tune from a devanand movie released that year Hope you will enjoy watching it as much as I have enjoyed making it. final test match between England and India England won the toss and opened the innings with loss in its spooner lush green people trees on walajar road nodding cheerfully at chepok parker gave a sensational start to the match clean bowling loss india has made five changes 
Mushtaq Ali, Amarnath, Gopinath, Divecha and Sain are on board with Azare, Lala, Roy, Mankar, Gulam and Umriga. Roy opens the innings with Mushtaq and goes on to score a century along with Umriga, securing a massive lead of 191 for India. Black bands around their left arms in remembrance of King George VI who died on the first day of the match. The hero of India's bowling was Vinu Mankar, who took 12 wickets in this match. Five of them stumped. Story of classic left arm bowling on a good wicket. Endless variations in flight, teasing and testing the batsmen, and then fatally luring them forward. Statham is out, caught Gopinath, bowled Mankar. And this is a historic moment, India's first ever victory in a test match. Today, we are very fortunate to have with us the 90-year-old Mr. Gopinath. He was among Vijay Hazare's 11 that made history we just watched. Gopinath scored a sparkling 35 with 7 boundaries in a 93-run partnership with Umbrigar and took the winning catch. Thanks to my friend Vijay Lokpalli, he put me in touch with Colonel Shankar who took us virtually to Mr. Gopinath's residence in Chennai just in time for a surprise celebration on the 69th anniversary of this match. Mr. Gopinath was shown the raw footage we just watched and here is his reaction. Mr. Jairad, I can't believe this. Before we resume our conversation with Mr. Gopinath, allow me to read a short paragraph from this lovely little book written by a renowned author and radio commentator from the 1950s who watched and likely broadcasted Gopinath's catch and the winning moment. February 10, 1952 will always be remembered as long as cricket is played in India. A deep silence had descended over the ground, but there was tension in the air as the last English pair were desperately trying to avoid an innings defeat. The clock in the Chepok Pavilion was striking three when Statham lifted Mankat to long on. All eyes were on Gopinath, the Madras player and the baby of the Indian team fielding in the deep. Gopinath had positioned himself for the catch. But would he take it? He made no mistake and the ball was safe in his hands and it was all over. Statham was out and India had won by the handsome margin of an innings and eight runs with more than a day to spare. The pent-up emotions burst into a crescendo of cheering to signal India's first ever victory in a test match. History was made. This is Mr. Jairaj Galagali, who I'm going to now, uh, you know, I'm going to play his... Hello, Mr. Gopinath. Hello. This is Jay Galagali. What an honor it is to be able to reach out to you today on the 69th anniversary of India's first ever test victory where you played a pivotal role. Here is a gift for you, a short clip from our Films Division's archives, possibly the only footage that has existed of this match. And uh, it's, it's an amazing clip which Mr. Jairaj has unearthed. And he's got a couple of questions, if uh, Mr. Gopnath, if you could answer these. It, it is something... Uh, for us, it was unbelievable. Uh, before that, doesn't matter which country, whatever it was, when we went to play a test match, even before we went into the ground, virtually, I would say we almost had lost it. I mean, we, we were the underdogs. Uh, we knew that we could not match up with England or uh, uh, virtually any country at the time. And we had never tasted victory. So, to us, uh, you know, if we draw a match, it was great. Uh, by and large, we lost matches. And we, we didn't even believe that we could beat any team. So it, it was something very strange in the sense that uh, five day matches, you go in there with the knowledge that we're going to lose. The, the, the psychic itself was that we can't play up to these people. I would say. Uh, we are great bowlers, we are very good batsmen, but we had a very poor feelings. I mean, uh, it was it used to be said those days, cricket was in India played by the Maharajas and Zamindavas and the rich people. They either batted or bowled and their servants fielded for them. Feeling was not part of the game at all. And today, as we all know, it, it, it's one of the most important part of the functions of the game. And that's what wins matches or losing matches. 
So for us, suddenly it dawned on us, yeah, we can do this, it's possible, this can happen. Okay, one of the fascinating things about cricket is that this is the only game that I know of, that you know, you can be a Don Bradman and get out first ball, it's possible. By and large in most other games, okay, if you take tennis, you can lose two sets but win the match. You, you always add a second, a third, a fourth and any number of chances to revive back. This is the only game when you get out, you are, you become a spectator. You just walk into the, and sit down and watch the match because you get only one chance. I was, uh, I was, uh, yeah, I, I, I was keen on cricket. I, 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 my uncle, I think, who took me uh, to a cricket match when I was about five or six, or whatever it is. If I remember right, it was a Ranji Trophy match between Dras and Polka, late in Chippa. And uh, Polka had Dennis Compton, this is what I remember at the time. Uh, he was a visiting player and he was playing for Holka. Uh, so, uh, I come from a family, my father was quite a good sport. He used to play hockey and all that sort of thing. Uh, so, it was a very sporting family and my uncles were very good in football and basketball and all that. So, we grew up in that kind of... Uh, uh, hey, why, really? yeah. So, I hadn't played any cricket. Virtually, I might have played somewhere with a few friends against the wall or something like <laughs> that. But beyond that, I didn't play any cricket till I was 17. And, and so for me, uh, uh, and I played for India when I was 20. So it was a tremendous change. Uh, but I must say, I, I never at any point in time thought, well, I must play for, uh, there's not India, for Midrasi, you know, Gulam Ahmed from Hyderabad. Uh, he was my best friend. Uh, in many places, uh, we were roommates. Uh, he was a little senior to me, but he was a lovely human being, lovely man. Uh, the person who I came, I don't know how or why, but got to know very closely with Dennis Compton in England. And I played against him in the, in the test match. And uh, uh, he was a lovely chap. Uh, he got friendly. And in fact... Um, uh, was he the one who came in the blue cream act? That's right. <laughs> same one. The same one. He, I probably the first one who really went into advertising like that. Uh, there was no such thing. <laughs> there was no such thing. As, as even the papers say, he got back and he said the word, word off. Mankar was a hero that day. He really took a lot of good kids. And we congratulated him. And uh, that was it. But then, you, you've got to look at it from the perspective of those days. Uh, people apart from players or cricket or any game, we were very, uh, uh, we were always taught to, uh, um, uh, we were, we wouldn't demonstrate our feelings. You know, we were taught to keep it in check and keep it inside. And even, even, even uh, catches that were held and all that, unlike now, the whole team converges and carries him and hugs him, you know. Never anything was said unless a brilliant catch was held, somebody might say, well held. And that would probably the captain might say. And that's it. Beyond that, nobody ran and nobody did it. But generally people were far less demonstrative. You didn't show your feelings. I mean, this was, uh, this was how wonderful. Uh, ah. So we never really <laughs> I, 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 what, what I celebrated today, I didn't do it on that day. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, really, I, I, would, I would think, uh, uh, to me, uh, 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 the greatest cricketer, the very good cricketing friend was Frank Warren. Uh, we only, he came with the uh, second Commonwealth team and that's the first test match that I played. It's an unofficial test. I played that match. And I don't know, before that I played a couple of matches that scored runs and um, we befriended each other for, I don't know why, he was such a lovely person. 
And you're the kind of person uh, who would score 60 runs and say, well, let the others have a chance. And so you get up and go. He was such a lovely chap. And <laughs> the first test I played, he happened to bowl the first over to me. And as he was passing by to bowl the over, he said to me, uh, uh, Gopi, I'll give you a long pop to break your test duck. <laughs> I didn't believe it. I didn't believe in test match. Somebody would gift you a uh, run to break your duck. But obviously, he knew how a guy like me at that time, I, knew, I must have been about 19 or something, how he comes into the test area and what his feelings are and how nervous he is and so on. Um, I, I didn't believe it, I faced it and he gave me a knock -off. I was taken taken by surprise because I didn't think he was going to do it. He, I thought he was just joking. Mm -hmm. He gave me a long hop, I hit him for a four. And then at the end of the war he said, now I'll hit you out. You know, okay. It so happened that match, he didn't get me out. Um, I, I made runs and I was not out and so on. So uh, to me, and I met him uh, in another Commonwealth team. Then I met him uh, in England, he was playing the Lancashire League. Uh, and uh, the day the, in England, the Lancashire League, uh, one match is dedicated to the professional, and uh, they collected money from the crowd in um, And he said, uh, I was with the Indian team, it was in 52 when I was in England. Um, he said, I'd like you to come for my uh, benefit match. And uh, so I went. I went around, because, okay, I was playing for India, so. He felt that I could help. And I took a hat around the crowd and collected his benefits from the crowd in this particular league match they played. He was a lovely human being. Wait, so and Frank believe Warren, it or not, I must tell you this, uh, he was literally in our home, by then I was married, in our home in Chennai, uh, about a week before he died, we sat in our home and we had a drink together and we had dinner at home. The West Indies were on tour and he was here in the class. I called him over for our meal. So that night he sat with us, with nobody else, just us. Uh, he sat with us, there with young chats and so on. And he was just telling me, I don't know, you know, for the last few weeks I've been tired and I've, you know, I'm doing this stuff and the other. Um, I don't know, we haven't found him. Uh, but I haven't been feeling too good. You know. The next morning he left for back home, rest of the day. In a week's time, he was dead. He had leukemia, which they discovered after that. He didn't know that. One week ago he was at home sitting uh, uh, and having a drink and having dinner. And so he, he was a lovely, to me, uh, he, he was the greatest cricketer ever. And uh, every man of him, I don't know, he was the first one who did the drawn match in Australia. Thank you very much for your memory, Mr. Gopinath. If you could uh, give a message for Mr. Jairaj Galgali, who is uh, unearthed this video. Mr. Jairaj, I can't believe this because in, in the times that I played, there was no television, there was no, uh, I, I, I don't know whether the, the probably uh, movies were only taken by uh, professional. Uh, cinematography. It's a lovely game. It's, it's, it's the finest game that I can think of. It's a noble game, I think, it is, because it's such a uh, it's a game that teaches you so many morals. It teaches you to be humble because you no, know, it teaches you, tells you in very clear terms that you might be the greatest, but you can hit the lowest also. Uh, in most other games, you can always come back, but here. It, it, it's, it's a game that makes you feel humble and says to you, you're fallible and uh, uh, yeah, don't think that you're cat's whiskers or whatever. So it's a lovely game and anybody who follows that game uh, will understand what, what it's all about. And thank you very much. I never knew there was anybody who would track this uh, game and that would be still about what, 60, 69 years, 69 years ago, uh, I, I would ever see a clipping, even if it's a short one, uh, it, it delights me so much. And that would be a greater celebration than the match itself. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gopinath.
We wish you great health and look forward to century and beyond in your life's innings.